Okay, now we're recording. Here we go. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. This prophecy, recorded in the last book of the Bible, is a revealing look into the very near future. It establishes that the final conflict between the forces of good and the forces of evil will be over worship. The fact that the battle over worship figures so predominantly in the prophecies of the final conflict implies that there is something different. Two warring beliefs in the realm of worship previously not on the stage of world religion. This controversy can only be over the day of worship because it is by the day of worship that one's loyalty is expressed to the deity he worships. Yahuwah himself emphasized upon which day he was to be worshipped when he admonished. The seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahuwah, thy Elohim. In recent years, Increasing light on the Sabbath has revealed a long-forgotten truth. The fact that the biblical Seventh-day Sabbath cannot be found using a pagan calendar. Only by using the ancient Hebrew calendar, the calendar of creation, can the true Sabbath be found. Various objections to this new and very startling truth have been raised. Some people rush to their pastors with the eager inquiry, Are these things true? Others are confused by apparent contradictions. Many articles and videos have been produced claiming to show the error in the Lunar Sabbath belief. A careful examination of scripture reveals the truth. In the light of scripture, the proofs against the Lunar Sabbath are found to be inconsistent with Scripture, history, and the manner in which Yahuwah works. If the Lunar Sabbath is true, why haven't we heard about it before? This cannot be true because God would never allow the Sabbath to be so completely lost and forgotten. Because the Sabbath is so very important, this is an assumption many have made. However, it is an erroneous assumption. Scripture itself prophesies that the true Sabbath would be forgotten. Yahuwah was like an enemy. He has done violence to his tabernacle. He has destroyed his place of assembly. Yahuwah has caused the appointed feasts and Sabbaths to be forgotten in Zion. When truth is not cherished as it should be, Yahuwah removes it for safekeeping. When early Christians compromised, embracing paganism, Yahuwah himself caused the Sabbaths to be forgotten. I will cause all her mirth to cease her feast days, her new moons, her sabbaths, all her appointed feasts. But the promise is that in the last remnant of time, truth would be restored. Because my people have forgotten me, they have caused themselves to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths. Thus says Yahuwah, 
Stand in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths, where the good way is, and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your souls. Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations, and you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath her delight, The weekly cycle has come down uninterrupted from creation. Saturday is the seventh day of the week, so of course it's the true Sabbath. Time itself is continuous. However, there are different methods for measuring that continuous time. An uninterrupted weekly cycle did not enter the calendar format until the Babylonians adopted one several hundred years before the Savior was born. All ancient calendars had weekly cycles that restarted once a month on each new moon or annually at the close of the old year. On a calendar where the weekly cycle restarts each month, the days of the week always fall on the same dates of the calendar. When the weekly cycle restarts at the new moon, the seventh day of every week always occurs on the 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th days of the month. Scripture supports this calendar format. It is significant that every time in Scripture a date is given for a seventh day Sabbath, either directly or contextually, it always falls on the 8th, 15th, 22nd or 29th. This confirms that the biblical calendar uses a lunar month in which the days of the week always fall on the same dates of the month. Did you guys catch that? That is a big point. Every time the Bible mentions a Sabbath, it's the 8th, 15th, 22, and 29th. Everywhere. No other, no other, no other calendar allows this the solar calendar the zodiac uh, zodiac calendar whatever you want to call it none of these calendars ever appear to have 8 15 22 and 29 consecutively and because this is every month on Yahuwah's calendar that's that's an important fact the moon was created on the fourth day it cannot determine the sabbath because it was not even created until day four of creation week this argument is as much an argument against Saturday as it is against a lunar Sabbath. Saturday is found only in the late Julian calendar, a pagan calendar, and the modern Gregorian calendar, a papal calendar. Both the Julian and the Gregorian calendars are solar calendars. If the lights created on the fourth day cannot be used for timekeeping, then Saturday must be dismissed as well, because the Gregorian calendar is based upon the sun. The fact is, both the sun and the moon were created by a fiat of creation. They were created when the mind of Yahuwah conceived and spoke them into existence. Yahuwah created age into everything. Adam and Eve are perfect examples of created age. Adam was not created to be a fetus or a newborn baby, but a fully grown man. Likewise, the birds and animals were not created as unhatched eggs or blind, needy baby animals. Just as when a jeweler sets a watch to the proper time, the creator properly positioned the moon to accurately keep track of all time to come. When Yahuwah created the sun, he positioned it in a precise location, the exact distance from Earth needed to provide the correct temperature, not too close, not too far. 
he just as carefully and deliberately placed the moon in the precise position needed in order to operate his timekeeping system. My pastor told me that the lunisolar calendar was used only for the feasts, not the Sabbath. Scripture teaches only one method of time calculation, the lunisolar calendar. Genesis 1, 14 states, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. The word seasons comes from the Hebrew word moed. Moed, moada, congregation, festive gathering, appointment, signal. Yahuwah met Israel there at specific times for the purpose of revealing his will. It is a common term for the worshipping assembly of Yahuwah's people. Moed is also translated seasons in Psalm 104, verse 19. He appointed the moon for seasons, Mo'adah. This clearly establishes that the moon was created for the express purpose of calculating the times of worship. The feasts of Yahuwah are all outlined in Leviticus 23. The very first feast listed is the seventh day Sabbath. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feasts of Yahuwah, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of Yahuwah in all your dwellings. Scripture does not present two calendars, one for the weekly Sabbath and another for the annual feasts. Furthermore, it should be remembered that when the moon was appointed the work of establishing worship times, there were no other feasts. The only feast in creation week was the weekly feast, the seventh-day Sabbath. John 7 through 9 proves that sometimes the weekly Sabbath falls on a date other than the 8th, 15th, 22nd, or 29th. In this passage, the seventh-day Sabbath falls on the 23rd after the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles on the 22nd. John 7 through 9 is one of the proofs in favor of a lunar calculated Sabbath. It clearly links the seventh day Sabbath to the 22nd day of the seventh month. The story begins with a statement made by the Savior on the sixth day of the week. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Yahushua stood and cried, saying, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. The feast here referenced is the Feast of Tabernacles, for in verse 2 of John 7, it states, Now the Jews' Feast of Tabernacles was at hand. Feast of Tabernacles is a seven-day feast, followed immediately by the seventh-day Sabbath, which in Leviticus 23, is called a holy convocation. Speak to the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days to Yahuwah. For seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire to Yahuwah. On the eighth day you shall have a holy convocation. Feast of Tabernacles always begins on the 15th day of the seventh month or the 15th day following new moon. It is a seven-day feast 
ending the 21st of the month. Thus, the very next day is a seventh day Sabbath. John 7 to 9 supports this. Scripture states that Yahushua stood and spoke on the last day, that great day of the feast. The last day of the feast is the 21st. After Yahushua spoke to the people, everyone went to his own house. But Yahushua went to the Mount of Olives. But early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. The Savior spent the night on the Mount of Olives. Early the next morning, on the Sabbath, he returned to the temple. It was on this occasion that the Jews tried to stone him for blasphemy. However, Yahushua hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them and so passed by. Now as Yahushua passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. The Savior's heart of love could not turn aside from helping this soul in need. He spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. Now it was a Sabbath when Yahushua made the clay and opened his eyes. Some people have assumed that this Sabbath had to have fallen on the 23rd of the seventh month. However, this erroneous assumption is based upon an incorrect understanding of the last day, the great day of the Feast of Tabernacles. As explained in Leviticus 23, the last day of Feast of Tabernacles is the 21st of the seventh month, because it is only a seven-day feast which begins on the 15th, a weekly Sabbath. Far from disproving the lunar Sabbath, John 7 to 9 actually supports it. But where does it explain the calendar in the Bible? Can you give me a text? Just one text that explain how the calendar worked. This seems like a reasonable request, but is it consistent with scripture? There are a number of things in the Bible which cannot be proven from a single text. Furthermore, the principles of sound Bible study are given in scripture as, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. The student of scripture must ask, what is the weight of evidence? When all texts are brought together on the subject, what is the conclusion of the matter? It is impossible to prove a Saturday Sabbath from scripture. The weight of evidence clearly supports a Sabbath calculated from the new moon, a lunar Sabbath. There is not a single verse in the Bible explaining the lunar solar calendar format, because it was common knowledge. All nations originally used a lunar solar calendar. A common assumption made by many is that the Julian weeks in the first century BC and AD were identical to the modern week, starting on Sunday, ending on Saturday. Archaeological and historical evidence established without a doubt that the early Julian week was an eight-day week. When the pagan planetary week was finally accepted in the first centuries AD, it began on Saturn's day and ended on Venus day, or the modern Friday. The likelihood of finding an explanation of the Julian calendar among the writings of the early church fathers is likewise highly improbable as the biblical writers assume the readers knew the lunisolar calendar 
So the paganized Christians assumed their readers knew the Julian calendar, as that was the calendar then in use. If the Jews at the time of Christ were keeping the wrong Sabbath, he would have corrected it. Since he did not, we can safely assume they were keeping the true Sabbath. It is true that the Savior would have corrected the Israelites if they had been worshiping on the wrong day. The very fact that he did not is evidence that at that time they were worshiping on the true Sabbath. Additional evidence that the Israelites were keeping the true Sabbath during the Savior's time on earth is found in the fact that Saturday did not exist in the Roman Julian calendar of the day. The Julian calendar at that time had an eight-day week. The Israelites were still worshiping by the calendar of Moses, not the calendar of their Roman conquerors. Saturday is the true Sabbath. That's when the Jews worship and they have never lost the Sabbath. It is true that the Jews today worship on Saturday. It is also true that they have never lost the concept of a seventh-day Sabbath. However, by their own admission, they deliberately set aside the biblical calendar calculated by the new moon. The new moon is still, and the Sabbath originally was dependent upon the lunar cycle. The months of the year were lunar and began with the new moon. Declaring the new month by observation of the new moon and the new year by the arrival of spring can only be done by the Sanhedrin. In the time of Hillel II, 4th century AD, the Romans prohibited this practice. Hillel II was therefore forced to institute his fixed calendar. Rabbi Louis Finkelstein, a well-known scholar from the Jewish Theological Seminary of America, emphatically stated, The present Jewish calendar was fixed in the 4th century. Maimonides, a medieval Jewish scholar, and most other Jewish chronologers agree that the modern Jewish calendar is based upon the mean motions of the sun and moon, the true calendar having been set aside. The fact that Jews today worship on Saturday is no evidence that Saturday is the seventh-day Sabbath of Scripture and should not be used as proof of anything except a change of calendar. On a lunar calendar, you sometimes get eight or even nine days between Sabbaths. This is wrong. The Sabbath is to come every seventh day. The fourth commandment states that the Sabbath comes after six days of labor. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahuwah, thy Elohim. There are never more than six days of labor per week on the true calendar. The weekly cycle restarts each new month. But new moons are worship days. Originally, the new moon was celebrated in the same way as the Sabbath. Gradually, it became... You guys, and this is the most typical way why those that are trying to reconcile the calendar cannot do so. They think it's on the eighth day. It's the eighth day of the month, but the seventh day of the week, because you have to count the new moon as a set-apart day. It is not counted a part of the week. It's counted as the head of the month, Rosh Kodesh. We're going to talk about that in just a minute, so that needs to be understood. <clears throat> came less important while the Sabbath became more and more a day of religion and humanity, of religious meditation and instruction. New moons are frequently classed with Sabbaths in Scripture. Thus says Adonai Yahuwah, the gateway of the inner court that faces toward the east 
shall be shut the six working days. But on the Sabbath it shall be open, and on the new moon it shall be open. Because new moons are worship days, there are never more than six working days before the next day of worship. On the modern solar calendar, new moons are not even noticed, let alone observed as a worship day. And yet, new moon, the day of worship which forms the foundation for biblical timekeeping, will still be kept in the new earth throughout all eternity. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another all flesh shall come to worship before me, says Yahuwah. If we are going to be worshiping the Creator on new moons throughout eternity, should we not worship Him on those days now? The lunar Sabbath is just so hard to understand. The truth should be so simple even a child can understand it. God would not make a test of faith out of anything this hard to understand. Neither newness of an idea nor difficulty to comprehend are sound reasons for rejecting something as error. The Savior himself prayed, I thank thee, O Father, ruler of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. The truth is, children often have an easier time understanding the biblical calendar than do adults. Even a very young child can count to seven. The difficulty comes when they are required to memorize arbitrary pagan names for the days and the months. The subject of a different calendar is actually more difficult for adults to grasp because they have spent so many years living by the Gregorian calendar. A different method of time measurement is, at first, very difficult for them to grasp. The difficulty, however, is not proof that the lunar Sabbath is false. It merely confirms the truth of Scripture, which foretold, He shall insult the Most High. He shall torment, wear out the Holy Ones of the Most High. And he shall attempt to change the calendar and the ordinance. This topic is far too important to delegate to someone else's study, be he priest or pastor. Everyone has a responsibility to study for himself the truths of Scripture. Yahuwah has promised to send the Spirit of Truth to lead all who want to know truth into that truth. Please study this vital topic for yourself. Study it with an open mind, a mind that is willing to obey if the Holy Spirit convicts you that it is truth. Winston Churchill is quoted as having said, Most people, sometime in their lives, stumble across truth. Most jump up, brush themselves off, and hurry on about their business, as if nothing had happened. Truth is too important to be brushed aside. Once it is presented, a person has an obligation to determine for himself whether or not it is so, and if it is, to obey that truth. When a man who is honestly mistaken hears the truth, he will either quit being mistaken or cease being honest. Will you determine to study for the truth? Will you obey that truth when you find it? 
your eternal destiny may hang on the decision you make. To take someone else's word for what is truth, or to study for yourself. All right, you guys, so we got an obligation to the truth. There is a part two to this. Let me, let me cue that up real quick for us, and then we'll uh, continue from there. This confusion and chaos, truth alone stands unassailable in the bewildering tumult of many opposing ideas, different claims against the biblical lunar Sabbath have been made. Most of these are due simply to a lack of knowledge and of understanding the truth. Everyone has inherited errors and traditions handed down from paganized Christianity. However, Scripture reveals its secrets to every searcher for truth. None need remain in confusion and error. Lunar Sabbatarians don't count some days of the week. Their calendar is full of non-days. There is no such thing as a non-day or a blank day. All time must be accounted for and the biblical loony solar calendar does not leave any time out. Solar and loony solar calendars both use the rotation of the Earth around the Sun to calculate the year. Because the solar year is 365 and a quarter days long, the extra time is accounted for on the Gregorian calendar by adding in a leap day. The leap day is February 29 and occurs every four years. On solar calendars, the months are of arbitrary length and not anchored to anything in nature. The biblical loony solar calendar, on the other hand, ties its months to the cycles of the moon. A lunation, like the solar year, is not a round number and contains 29 and a half days. Because of this, some months have 29 days and other months have 30 days. On a lunation of 30 days, the 30th day is a translation day. This is an astronomical term and refers to that period of time when the moon cannot be seen before the new lunation starts. Translation day comes between the last seventh day Sabbath of the month and the next month's new moon day. It is not part of the weekly cycle, but it is not a blank day. It has a date within the monthly cycle. And you guys, this is, in my opinion, is why it says in Jubilees that if you don't reckon these days right, you'll end up with 10 extra days of year. It's because it's never known until you sight that moon, whether it's going to be 29 or 30 days. If we don't reckon that day, guess what? You end up with 10 extra days every year, sometimes nine, sometimes 11. It fluctuates year to year. OK, so that's really important, too. This is a time where we're supposed to witness. We're supposed to go out. Just think of it as a pause period between the months. It's called Rosh Kodesh. Rosh Kodesh is the head of the month or the ending of the, of the, of the previous month. It's the same thing. It can be 29 or 30 days, all right? So we, we got to know that, all right? So this is a really critical point within recon, reconciling the months. Every month is we have to know this, all right? On the lunar calendar, the Sabbath floats around each month. The weekly Sabbath occurs on different days of the week. Sometimes it's on Monday. Then the next month, it changes to Wednesday, and after that to Thursday. It's never consistent. The most notable difference between the Gregorian calendar and the biblical calendar is found in the weekly cycle. The Gregorian calendar, like the Julian calendar before it, has a continuous weekly cycle. The biblical calendar, like most ancient calendars, 
does not. It is only the difference in weekly cycles that makes the lunar-based Sabbath appear to float from month to month on the Gregorian calendar. The biblical calendar is very constant because the weekly cycle of the biblical calendar restarts with New Moon Day. The dates of the month always fall on the same days of the week. This is not so on the Gregorian solar calendar. The seventh day Sabbath floats from date to date to date, each month, all through the year. Far from floating around, the true biblical Sabbath is very consistent and always falls on the 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th days of the lunar month. New moons cannot be Sabbaths simply because the Bible gives numerous examples of people traveling or working on new moons. It is true that the Bible gives examples of people traveling or constructing the tabernacle on new moons, this is because new moons are not seventh-day Sabbaths. The various prohibitions against travel and cooking on the seventh-day Sabbath were not applied to new moon days. However, new moon days are worship days. They are a time of family togetherness, a time for rejoicing and thanksgiving for the blessings of the past month and renewed consecration for the upcoming month. New moons are in a class of worship day all by themselves. This is demonstrated in the record of required sacrifices listed in Numbers 28 and 29. The days with the least amount of required sacrifices were common work days. The Seventh-day Sabbath had more sacrifices required than ordinary work days. New Moon Days had even more sacrifices required than for the Seventh-day Sabbath. Only the annual feasts had more required daily sacrifices than New Moons. Scripture presents New Moons as a time of worship in eternity future. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me. You guys, this is, this is a prophecy from Isaiah 66 that tells you in the kingdom, which means now as well, it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath, that's two distinct days being mentioned here. All flesh shall come to worship me uh, before me, says Yahuwah. So whether you do it now, you will do it in the kingdom. It says all flesh shall come from one new moon to another. So that needs to be noted right there. The new moons is a set apart day. It is a worship day. It is not to be counted as a work week day. That's why you see the number one on that calendar up at the top. It sets apart. It set apart from, from the rest of the days. Does everybody understand that? This is one of the three days mentioned by the Bible. New moons are set apart days. Again, if you do not reckon the year correctly and don't count the new moons because you can have one day or two day new moons, you will end up with about 10 days roughly every year extra is because it, it doesn't reconcile with the monthly count unless you do that. That needs to be pointed out. This is the biggest, the biggest counting mistake that most people make, especially when they're first coming to this understanding is how to reconcile that new moon, right? They, they always get this um, confusion that, oh, well, the seventh day is actually the eighth day. That doesn't make any sense. No, it is the seventh day, but the eighth day of the month. This is how we get eight, uh, 15, instead of seven, 14, 21, it's eight, 15, 22, 29. It is because of that new moon day. That's why we're hammering this in the beginning right off the bat is getting to understand the new moon 
<clears throat> this is how we reconcile the month. And it is not the full moon, you guys. We're going to hit that in just a minute. That's another misunderstanding. What is new moon and what is full moon? Okay, this is two different times. If we don't get that right, we will be exactly 14 days off. Uh, like some that are on the lunar solar calendar, like uh, Macau scriptures, they're doing the full moon as the new moon. That is incorrect. Okay, so we need to be uh, on top of this from the get-go, what this is, okay? Says Yahuwah. All who desire to worship the Creator will do so on His appointed times, the weekly, monthly, and yearly times designated for worship. This lunar Sabbath idea contradicts itself. If this theory were true, it means that the Exodus would have happened on a lunar Sabbath, thus breaking the Sabbath. It is true that the Israelites left Egypt on the 15th day of the first month. However, they did not break the Sabbath because the holy hours were already over by the time they had left. Does everybody understand that? That's another thing that people like to harp on, right? When they left on the 15th, everybody know when it was? It was after the sun went down. The sun has already gone down. Shabbat is over at that point. Just like when they get to Elim one month later and Yahuwah gives them the quail, when does he give them to them? In the evening when the sun goes down, Shabbat is already over. Okay, everybody up to speed on that. All right, don't be confused by that. On the 15th day, when they left, it was after sundown. When they get to Elim, one month later, on the 15th, the, the meat or the quail comes to them after sundown. All right. The biblical record provides two important clues to the timing of the Exodus. Numbers 33, verse 3, provides the date of the Exodus. They departed from Ramesses in the first month, on the 15th day of the first month. On the day after the Passover, the children of Israel went out with boldness in the sight of all the Egyptians. Deuteronomy 16.1 reveals that this occurred at night. Observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover to Yahuwah, your Elohim. For in the month of Abib, Yahuwah, your Elohim, brought you out of Egypt by night. The date of the Exodus was the 15th of Abib, the first month on the day after the Passover. Within a lunar month, the 15th is always a seventh day Sabbath. However, the Israelites left at night after the sacred hours of the Sabbath were passed. It must be remembered, Yahuwah is the lawgiver. Just as truth does not contradict itself, Yahuwah, who himself is truth, never breaks his own laws. Saturday has always been the seventh day Sabbath. In fact, the very word, Sabbath, has been preserved in many languages and it always designates the seventh day, Saturday. The fact that the word Sabbath appears in many languages is not proof that Saturday is the biblical Sabbath. All it proves is the widespread dissemination of paganized Christianity. Saturday, like the continuous weekly cycle, is a fairly recent addition to the calendar. When Julius Caesar set aside the lunisolar calendar of the Roman Republic and adopted a straight solar calendar, the Julian calendar, the week, had eight days designated A through H. As the Persian mystery cult of Mithraism gained popularity in Rome, the pagan planetary week was adopted. 
This was a seven-day week beginning on DA's Saturni, or Saturn's day. The second day of the week was DA's Solace, or Sun's day. The third day of the week was DA's Lune, or Moon's day. The week ended on DA's Veneris, or Venus day, which is the modern Friday. Roman adoption of Mithraism is directly responsible for the abandonment of the eight-day Julian week and the adoption of the seven-day planetary week. It is not to be doubted that the diffusion of the Iranian Persian mysteries has had a considerable part in the general adoption by the pagans of the week with the Sunday as the holy day. The names which we employ unawares for the other six days came into use at the same time that Mithraism won its followers in the provinces in the West. And one is not rash in establishing a relation of coincidence between its triumph and that concomitant phenomenon. Mithraism was a sun cult. Consequently, the day of the sun became more and more important. The preeminence assigned to the Dies Solis, Day of the Sun, also certainly contributed to the general recognition of Sunday as a holiday. This is connected with a more important fact, namely, the adoption of the week by all the European nations. The seven-day planetary week was named after the planetary gods. As this week spread throughout Europe, the names of the days of the week spread with it. Many languages today show Roman Catholic influence by renaming the first day of the week Sunday, the Lord's Day, and Saturday, the seventh day of the week. It needs to be said here that when he speaks of the Julian calendar, currently, you guys, we're on the, what's called the Gregorian calendar after Pope Gregory. But during the time of Yeshua, there was eight days in the week, and Saturday was the first day. So, so we need to understand this. Incidentally, any calendar that lines up with the days of, of Yahuwah's week, day one, day two, day three to day seven, as Saturday, as the uh, Sabbath, especially if they wear the kippah, is on a Jewish Saturday Sabbath. You need to understand that, okay? Don't be misled. Saturday is not the Sabbath. The Sabbath is not fixed in a calendar. It is ordained by the moon. Yahuwah tells us every month when the Sabbath is going to be. And on a Gregorian calendar, that's going to float. There is motion involved, okay? Always there is motion involved. When it's fixed, it is man-made. Understand this. Understand this, especially if you see someone wearing a kippah, which is a Jewish Talmudic tradition. They are on a Jewish calendar. Understand. Sabbath. However, those are not the original names of the days of the week. The astrological influence is obviously even more pronounced around the fringes of the Roman Empire, where Christianity arrived only much later. English, Dutch, Breton, Welsh and Cornish, which are the only European languages to have preserved to this day the original planetary names of all the seven days of the week are all spoken in areas that were free of any Christian influence during the first centuries of our era, when the astrological week was spreading throughout the empire. Saturday, like the pagan Julian calendar that adopted it in the first century AD, is irreparably pagan. It is not the true biblical seventh-day Sabbath, and no amount of renaming it the Sabbath can transform it into being the true Bible. Now, does everybody understand that? 
Now, this happened with Hillel II in 325 AD under Constantine, when he was pressured by, the, by Constantine to fix the calendar in its place. And it was to coincide with the Roman calendar. Okay, so under very um, strong duress was this Jewish rabbi forced to create this calendar that they see, we, we see today with the Jews, which observe it on a, sound, uh, a Saturday. Anytime you see Sabbath observed on Saturday, it is a Jewish calendar, period. Doesn't matter who they claim to be. They can be claiming to be Messianic on a Hebrew calendar, but if it's on Saturday, guess what? It's a Roman pagan solar calendar, period. That's what it is. Sabbath. The pagan names of the planetary week have been perpetuated in the calendar in use among the so-called Christian nations. Every time we look at the calendar, we have before us a constant reminder of the amalgamation of paganism and Christianity that took place as a result of the great religious apostasy. That falling away foretold by the Apostle Paul, which occurred in the early centuries of the Christian Church and made the modern Babel of conflicting sects and creeds which profess the name of Christ. The lunar cycle makes a person break the real, unbroken Seventh-day Sabbath that goes all the way back to Creation Week. It is an assumption based on long practice that the week has cycled without interruption ever since creation. However, the modern week comes directly from paganism, from the names of the days of the week to the continuous weekly cycle the pagan origins of the modern week can be traced. The only resemblance to the biblical week is found in the number of days within the week. Both the modern week and the creation week have seven days. However, the modern week is a satanic deception specifically designed to counterfeit the biblical week. The planetary week was standardized to the modern format, beginning on Sunday and ending on Saturday at the Council of Nicaea in the 4th century AD. In 321 AD, Constantine, Emperor of Rome, by civil enactments, made the venerable Day of the Sun, which day was then notable for its veneration the weekly rest day of the Empire. The enforcement of the weekly observance of Sunday gave official recognition to the week of seven days and resulted in the introduction of it into the official civil calendar of Rome. The Romans passed that calendar down to us and in it we have still the ancient planetary titles of the days of the week. Counterfeit worship requires a counterfeit calendar, and the Council of Nicaea provided it. Biblical calendation was supplanted by pagan solar calendation, and the planetary week replaced the biblical week, which depended upon the moon. This planetary week was paganism's counterfeit of the true biblical week instituted by the Creator in the beginning of Earth's history. In the counterfeit week employed in ancient paganism, the venerable day of the sun was esteemed by the heathen above the other six days because it was regarded as sacred to the sun, the chief of the planetary deities. Just as the true Sabbath is inseparably linked with the biblical week, so the false Sabbath of pagan origin needed a weekly cycle. Thus we have found that the planetary week of paganism is Sunday's twin sister and that the two counterfeit institutions were linked together.
The conflict between Sunday keeping and Sabbath keeping has always been against the day commonly known as Saturday. There's no record of a conflict between Sunday and a floating Sabbath, nor is there any record of Christians ever using a different calendar. This is not true, and the historical record proves it. The transition from worshiping by the biblical calendar to the full acceptance of the pagan calendar was not an event that occurred overnight or even within a single lifetime. It was a process of creeping compromise over centuries. As soon as some Christians began to apostatize, embracing various aspects of paganism, other Christians stood firm for the truth, unbending in the face of severe opposition. At every step in the course of the apostasy, at every step taken in adopting the forms of sun worship and against the adoption and the observance of Sunday itself, there had been constant protest by all real Christians. Those who remained faithful to Christ, the Savior, and to the truth of the pure word of Yahuwah, observed the Sabbath of the Lord according to the commandment and according to the word of Elohim, which sets forth the Sabbath as the sign by which the Lord, the creator of the heavens and the earth, is distinguished from all other gods. These accordingly protested against every phase and form of sun worship. Other, and that needs to be said too, that all through time, so we wonder why, why are we just figuring this out later uh, in this time? All through time in the 2000 years since Yeshua, there have been believers who have known the scriptures and known the reckoning of the sun and the moon that have pro protested and were killed because of this, you guys, because they were pointing out the actual Sabbath. Now, the enemy does, doesn't want you to know this. He's hid it from you, and he's, and he's disguised it amb ambiguously through many other Sabbaths to where it's very confusing. This needs to be understood because this is a very important um, thing to Yahuwah, to meet him on this day, his day, his Sabbath. Not what we think Sabbath is, a fixed day, Saturday or Sunday. There's power lost in that. We won't, we won't uh, understand that until we get a little further, but this is a really important thing to the Father. His name and these Sabbaths are very important. And because we know this, you are endowed with power because of this, okay? When you know the truth, so let's understand that, all right? The enemy has worked overtime through religion to hide these days from us. First, we were told it was Sunday. And then when we come out of Babylon and we started going to, to Jews to uh, the Sabbath, we come to Saturday. Both are wrong. His day floats all over the Gregorian calendar because it's determined by the moon as per Psalm 104, 19 says, the moon determines these days, all right? So let's not make a mistake about this. As compromised, especially in the East, by observing both Sabbath and Sunday. But in the West, under Roman influences and under the leadership of the church and the bishopric of Rome, Sunday alone was adopted and observed. This creeping compromise by Christians with some worshiping on both the lunar Sabbath and Sunday, others on Saturday and Sunday, and some on Sunday alone, caused great confusion among the pagan Mithraists. Tertullian, an early Christian writer, admitted this fact. He clearly stated that Christians who worshiped on Saturn's day as the seventh day of the week were themselves deviating from an Israelite custom of which they were ignorant. We shall be taken. Listen to this. Tertullian, a, a historian. He has no dog in the fight, you guys. He don't care if it's Saturday, Sunday, Monday, or, or Friday, okay? He is telling you facts 
as it is from his time. Okay, understand this. The pagans were keeping a Saturday, sometimes a Sunday Sabbath. Who does that today? Anyone that's keeping those two days on a pagan calendar, you guys, and this comes from a historian who has no dog in the fight. He's got no reason to lie to you, okay? He doesn't care whether it's, it's Monday, Friday, Wednesday, or Thursday, or Saturday, or whatever, okay? He's telling you as it is, as how they were believing in that time, okay? Taken for Persians, Mithraists, perhaps. The reason for this, I suppose, is that it is known that we pray towards the East. Likewise, if we devote the Day of the Sun to festivity, from a far different reason from sun worship, we are in a second place from those who devote the Day of Saturn, themselves also deviating by way of a Jewish custom of which they are ignorant. The custom of worshipping on Saturn's day, the seventh day of the week, once it was bumped from the first to the last day of the week, was based on the Israelite custom of worshipping on the seventh day Sabbath. However, Saturday itself was not the Hebrew Sabbath, as the weekly cycles were different. The facts of history reveal Saturday to be nothing more than a day on the pagan planetary week, honoring the bloodthirsty planetary god, Saturn. The widespread acceptance of tradition has led many to assume that their beliefs are based solely on scripture, when in fact, many beliefs are merely ancient customs handed down from pagans all have a solemn responsibility to study each belief for themselves. Let no one take a stand against the truth of the biblical calendar until a thorough study of the subject has been made. Scripture warns against anyone taking a hasty and dogmatic stance prior to searching for truth. He who answers a matter before he hears it it is folly and shame to him. The Sabbath, which is the sign of loyalty to the Creator, is of paramount importance to everyone living on earth. Therefore, study to show thyself approved unto Elohim, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Will you accept heaven's challenge to study for yourself? Will you search to find and observe the true seventh day Sabbath? Very good presentation. I couldn't have done it better, you guys. That's why I. I shared this with you. And by the way, World's Last Chance was basically another witness to me. When I come across them, I was just studying the calendar and it was lockstep. Everything that I was seeing over there was exactly what the Holy Spirit was showing me. So I wanted to share that with you. Um, again, I couldn't have put it any better than that. Um, yeah, so uh, Let's go to any questions before I continue. I want to continue with the full moon or the new moon uh, as reckoning the calendar. You guys got any questions before we continue? Anything to this point? Yes, Nate, I am very aware that the uh, site is down. Both sites, back, as a matter of fact, both sites that I had, codesearcher.com and .org have both been compromised and have been uh, <laughs> hijacked. So, yeah, if you want to do a personal names code, go to my link and uh, donate there and then email me your information. That's the only way that we can do that. So, anyway, back to questions. Anybody got questions so far on the calendar? I've got a question. Yes. Do you think, because I heard that 
after some of the earth changes during the time of Moses, that Moses had to go study the sun, moon, and the stars to try to figure out the calendar, and that at times it was too smoky and this and that, and he had to study it. Do you think after these times um, that it's possible after the earth changes and such that there might have to be a new kind of time change, a new calendar, or do you think okay, it'll so, be Right, so we know from from cultures and from their reckoning the calendar this is all across all cultures across the world it doesn't matter if you're japanese or if you're syrian or if you're babylonian or chinese um, basically it's all the same it was 360 days and then something happened what happened right so this is where planet x and the cyclical event of catastrophic catastrophic events um the theory that something changed. Uh, this could be observed during the time of Noah, um, during the time of Hezekiah, during the time of Joshua, because Hezekiah, the, the, the calendar went 10 degrees one way, during the time of Joshua, it went 10 degrees the other way. Then at the time of Yeshua, there was a three hour eclipse when the moon eclipsed the sun for only seven minutes. So obviously there was something else that happened. And by the way, the text mentions there was an earthquake that took place. We can see from other cultures in their records that it was not localized. It was worldwide. So something perturbed our planet and, and or our solar system and changed everything. So we were no longer a 360-day calendar. We went to 360 day, 364.5 days in the year. So we gained 4.5 days what happened to our solar system it was perturbed and then it equalized what does that mean that means with the rotation of the earth and the rotation of the moon the days and months equalized right so no longer were we 360 uh we went to 364 and one half which gives us 29 days 29.5 days of each month so we gained some time with the passage of this. So the answer to something absolutely happened and it did change the way we see the calendar, but it equalized. It wasn't inconsistent. In other words, it, it became to where it was 29.5 days every month. Now this probably took a couple of years for this to happen. And this is, and I'm just saying, this is my opinion. This is probably why we see speculation in places like Qumran and, and, you know, other uh, cultures, they were trying to figure this out in that time frame that it was equalizing out. Can you imagine, you know, as a farmer, your planting seasons are based on 360 days and suddenly you got another 4.5 days in the year. How do you reconcile that? And over a period of two or three years that this took to equalize, it could cause some headaches. It could cause some, you know, going, what is going on here? It doesn't sound like much. Four days doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a big deal when you're planting and when you're harvesting. So they had to find someone to reconcile this. And could it be that Moses had a problem? Absolutely. Um, you know, people in ancient times didn't have the luxury of, you know, some of the technology that we have today. So what do they have? Observation and calculation, right? So they were more than likely trying to figure this thing out. Um, and like I said, the equalization um, made it a little easier during that time that it was equalizing, it's changing. So, so that two to three period of time, um, you, you would have an accurate uh, recollection of it. It had to be after it equalized. So I don't know what Moses did. Some people have, have posed that today. You know, what, is, what if there's clouds in the sky? We can't see the moon, right? How would we know? Well, here's the thing. Each phase of the moon, meaning each day of the lunar, lunation cycle, there's a different, the moon looks different. So it doesn't mean, it doesn't matter if you've missed the first few days. Let's, let's say we missed the first week. We couldn't see the moon at all. We can, we can tally the days. We know when the sun rises and when the sun sets. So we can tally the days. But when we finally see that moon and we can see the face of it, we can know exactly what day of the month is and therefore calculate those states that we had to assume right everybody with me that's how you would do that in ancient times right 
you wouldn't have the luxury of, of looking on your cell phone and, and going to one of these convenient websites and seeing what the lunation is, right? You would have to physically observe and physically calculate this yourself. Otherwise, you're guessing, right? But the fact is, for each day, the moon looks different. So this is why I've said if you were in a, col uh, a coma for two or three weeks in ancient times, you could come out of that coma and look at the moon and know exactly what day it is, but you could not do that with the sun. You couldn't walk out, even, you know, even if you weren't in a coma, you can't walk outside tomorrow and look at the sun and tell me exactly what day of the month it is. But you can do that with the moon every day of every month. That's a fact. And so ancient people knew this, especially herdsmen, those that kept sheep and goats and cattle who would be under the stars at night knew the sun, moon, and stars intimately, okay? This was and is their calendar. This is how they reckon time, you guys. It wasn't like today. We, we, we're so spoiled with the conveniences of technology. This is what they did. They went outside and looked at the sun, moon, and stars as per Genesis 1 tells us what the stars are for. It's a, it's a clock. It's basically a clock. And no, you're not worshiping the sun, moon, and stars by looking at it and observing it. This is, this is preposterous to think that I could walk into my house and look at the clock on the wall and be accused of worshiping the clock because I'm observing what timing is. It's absurd. This is what he created it for. Now, we've gotten off of that, and we've gotten into fixed days. Now, we have days that are fixed in a calendar. We, we have it on paper, and we could just flip it open and look at it, right, and, and reckon the time. It just so happens that it, it's not fixed. You can get off on your count looking at a fixed time, uh, calendar. So I hope that answers your question. Any more questions? All right, I want to bring up um, a article from um, Troy's site on the moon. And so we're going we're gonna to read this together, and then I'm going to read you some scriptures on Rosh Chodesh, which is the new moon in the scriptures, because uh, we need to reconcile those two days, full moon and new moon. This is one of the biggest um, mystery, or I wouldn't say mystery, biggest misunderstandings between the Hebrews that are trying to reconcile um, this. I mean, it's like this with everything. When you know it, with everything, there's going to be two different ways to look at it. There are going to be someone that says, no, it's this way. No, it's that way. And that's with everything, you guys. <laughs> the devil in the details, right? All right. So let me just start here with reading what he's got here. Is the new moon the full moon? We need to establish this right now because there's there's another large, very large um, Hebrew community that's, that's using the lunar solar calendar that believe that the full moon is the new moon. And this is the Macau scriptures, uh, guys. I love that guy. I, I like watching his videos. They're very thorough. It just so happens he, they're two weeks off. And, uh, you know, I'm not being partial here. I'm just, you know, this is my understanding of the scriptures, Right. Um, it doesn't make any sense to me to start the, the month at the full moon. And the reason being is because it's very hard to determine that fullness. When you get to 1% and 2% of a full moon, you guys, you can't tell the difference looking at a full moon, whether, whether it's 2% less or 2%, um, you know, within 1% or 2%, you can't tell it. Okay, but when it's a crescent or no moon and then a crescent, that's when you can tell it. There's no, there's no doubt about it at all. And for most cultures, even with most Native American uh, cultures, that is the reckoning of the moon is, is coming from conjunction to the first crescent of the moon um, is when they start their count. So let's start here. For hundreds of years, people have accepted the first visible crescent of the Jews as the announcement of the new month in scripture. We have not found this to be the case. Rather, this was practice was picked up in Babylon. However, there is now a growing movement that's, that says that the full moon is actually the new moon. We will address this issue in the study. The first phase of the, of the month or new moon is 
from the Hebrew word Chodesh. And this is the Strong's word H20, uh, H2320. And is used in scripture 279 times. The term full moon, which is Kaseth, we talked about this last week, and I may have misspelled that wrong for you guys, is strong 3677. Now, I've said that this word is a, basically a misnomer. I think this is something that's been mistranslated because the word cassette means covered. And as you'll see here in the uh, explanation, it, it doesn't make any sense because it talks about the, the moon being covered in light. Now, this word typically means hidden. So how do you hide something that's full of light? It doesn't make any sense. Okay. So here's what it says. It is used twice in scripture. Chodesh is sometimes used to mean month, but, but is often used to indicate a new moon or the first day of the month. This is called a synonym. A synonym is when you've got um, two different words that mean the same thing. Now, there be there are some that will argue that, no, this is not the moon. The word for moon is Yerach. That is true. The word Yerach means moon, but so does the word Chodesh. That is a common thing. You can find this in all the translators. You can find this in, in the Jewish encyclopedias. And no, I don't believe it's a conspiracy to hide this. It is a common fact. In grammar, it's called a synonym. We have to understand this, that there could be two different words that means the same thing. The first, uh, the phase of first of the month or new moon is the Hebrew word Chodesh, H2320, which is used 279 times in scripture. The term full moon, Kaseth, again, this word means covered, is H3677 and is used just twice in the scriptures. Kodesh is sometimes used to mean month, again, a synonym, but often is used to indicate the new moon of the first day of the month. Kodesh comes from the root word, H2318, which means to rebuild. Now, let's think about that. When you got no moon, it goes from a full moon all the way down to no moon. And then what do you do? You rebuild, right? So you see that first crescent. And then it's a little larger the next night, a little larger and a little larger until you get a, a gibbous moon. And then you get a full moon after that. It's building now, I've heard some put it to, to the, uh, you know, when it says that there was no light and then there was light to the moon and not the sun, in other words. Got okay, somebody coming in. So this would fit. Let there be light would be the first crescent. And then it builds to a full moon after that. I've, I've said this in the last class. This is very much like the life cycle of man. When we start out as nothing, when we start as, a, as an embryo, we haven't been born yet, and then we're born, and then we grow to fullness, and then wane to the, the latter days of our life. It's the, it's the moon cycle, okay? Kodesh, Kodesh comes from the root word H2318, which means to rebuild. From the full moon phase, the moon is torn down, not rebuilt. I've had a, I've, I have a hard time believing this is... Um, Troy's words, I have a hard time believing that the father would tear down the moon and tell Israel that it was, it was in reality being rebuilt. In Genesis, in Genesis lexicon, it says this about the word full moon translated from Hebrew, the word cassette or cassette with an H, H3677, Proverbs 720. And Psalms 80, 81 4. It is actually Psalm 81 3 in the KGV, the full moon, according to Isa Bar Ali, concerning whom uh, yeah, yada, 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 is the first day of the moon, also the, the whole time of the full moon, and also is often used by Bar Habrius and Ephraim Sirius. The entomology is not clear to me, for it is not sad. This is what I've said before about Kaseth being concealed. He's saying here it's not clear, uh, for it is not satisfactory to say that it is a so-called uh, from the whole moon being covered with light, right? Again, <clears throat> Kaseth means covered, or in other words, hidden. 
It doesn't mean it doesn't make any sense that that it's translated. It's hidden in light because if if you're covered in light, if you're illuminated, are you hidden? No, everybody sees that. So it doesn't make any sense. I've said this myself before. I think this is something fishy going on with the translation of this word cassette. Hidden would would more than likely be um, not seen. The Hebrew word excuse me, the Hebrew root is Strong's H3680. Verbs of covering are often applied in the sense of hiding or covering over, but never, as far as we know, to that of giving light. Genesis does not understand, Gen Genesis does not understand why this word is translated as it is because of the root entomology of this word to cover up or fully covered concealed or hidden, not full of light. Does everybody understand that? This is something kind of fishy with this translation. Kaseth means concealed or hidden. But King James has got it as con, uh, uh, full of light, in other words, or covered in light. That doesn't make any sense. Apparently, this word has been translated as full moon, has been mistranslated. It should be fully covered or dark of the moon. I'm not sure if you've considered it, but it's very difficult to hide the full moon. You may have a cloud to cover it, but someone somewhere is going to see that thing for sure. I had not seen uh, Genesis commentary before, but his confusion over the use of the word is priceless. Some say the moon did not exist until the fourth day of creation. And then Yahuwah has, was forced to create a four-day-old moon. Since the time on earth began four days earlier, look at Genesis 1, 1 again, everything in the heaven and, even, and everything on earth was spoken into exist, existence in Genesis 1, 1. And from that point, he just moved everything around to his liking. For the fourth day of creation, the word Moses used was made, asa which does not mean created from scratch. It means made like a bed after you've uh, got up in the morning. It means advanced upon or appointed, for instance. He appointed, a saw the moon for season, Psalm 104, 19. Here, the full moon as new moon suffers a total kill shot. In this model, the father is forced to create the moon from scratch four days past full. Sure, he could do that, but why should he have to? The moon is part of his clock. Time on earth began in Genesis 1.1. The model is, uh, as written in scripture, Genesis 1.1, proves the dark of the moon as new moon, as darkness covers everything. Remember what I said, there was no light, and then he said, let there be light. So if there's no light, we're talking about a hidden moon. And then when it says, let there be light, now we have a crescent, okay? Everybody follow, right? Here is a short study from a friend of mine. According to a brother, Matthew, Psalm 81.3 has been misunderstood and makes a compelling case for those who have accepted the full moon as new moon to re-examine their position. And it says here, is the full moon the new moon? This is really important to reconcile this. This is one of the major con contentious points between Hebrews that are on the lunar solar calendar. M many of them are on the full moon is new moon, and many of us are on the new, uh, the hidden moon is new moon. There is a belief among some brethren involving the understanding of Yahuwah's correct calendar that new moon is actually the full moon. They believe that both the conjunction and the first visible crescent of the moon have nothing to do with the beginning of the month. This short article will examine the points they give and will show why this teaching is not scriptural. We ask all brethren to diligently consider our conclusions and let, us, and let the scriptures be your final authority. The passage given most often by the new moon is full, uh, the new full moon advocates can be found in the book of Psalms 81 uh, verse 3 through 6. In the American Standard Version of the scriptures, it reads as follows. Blow the trumpet at the new moon, comma, 
at the full moon, comma, and on the feast day, for it is a statute for Israel, an ordinance of the Almighty of Jacob. He appointed it in Joseph for a testimony. And when he went out over the land of Israel, where I heard a language that I knew not, I removed his, his shoulder from the burden, and his hands were freed from the basket. The scriptural evidence they give from this passage is that there is no conjuncting. And in between the phases of the new moon and full moon, three verses close, three, the three verses closes by saying, on our feast day, not days. This plainly identifies the new moon as the full moon. Thus, the full moon is the first day of any given scriptural month. First of all, there is a conjunctive, and between the phases of the new and full moon, no, there's not. He's asking a question there. However, what has been overlooked is that the Hebrew word translated new moon can also be translated as month, as many times in the scriptures, the Hebrew word defined by S. Strong's exhaustive concordance as follow, Kodesh, uh, H23, excuse me, H two, excuse me, H2318, the new moon, by implication, a month, monthly or new moon. Also notice a few times in scripture where the word Kodesh has been translated month. Now, this is, again, is a word that is synonymous. This is in most translations that you'll find in all of the scriptures. It is the same thing. Kodesh means new month or new moon. The word Yerak is not used. Does that mean that it's, you know, they're telling a lie? No, it does not. It does not at all. This is proper grammar in Judaism. It is called a synonym. It's two words that mean the same thing. Okay. In the 600th day of, in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, and the same day were the fountains of the great deep broke up. This is Genesis 7, 11. And the, and the people came up out of Jordan on the 10th day of the first month and encamped in Gagal, in the eastern border of Jericho. This is Joshua 4, 19. As you can see, both of these passages, along with the host of others, translate the Hebrew word Kodesh as month. Notice also that these passages refer to the 17th day of the Chodesh, and the 10th day of the Chodesh, in further examination of Psalms 81, 3 through 6, we shall see that it refers to the 15th day of the Chodesh, which is because the passage in Psalm 81, 3 could be rendered as, blow the trumpet in a new month, and at, or excuse me, comma, at the full moon, similar to rendering the New English Version of the Bible. Blow the, the horn in a new month. Comma, for the full moon of the day of our pilgrim feast, comma, is a law for Israel, an ordinance for the Almighty of Jacob. All right? This would allow the passage to be understood as blowing a trumpet on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And this is further seen from the context of the passage. Psalms 81, 5 shows that Yahuwah went out through the land of Egypt. Verse 6 shows that Yahuwah removed Israel, removed Israel's shoulders from the burdens and the hands of from the pots. That uh, what is saying that the full moon was the day when Israel was delivered from the Egyptian bondage. What day was Israel delivered from bondage? And they departed from Ramesses in the first month, on the 15th day of the first month, on the morrow after the Passover, the children of Israel went out and with a high hand in the sight of the Egyptians, Numbers 33, 3. Numbers 33, 3 tells us that, the is, that Israel was delivered from Ramesses on the 15th day of the first month. Psalm 83, excuse me, Psalm 81, 3. Six tells us that Israel was delivered from Egypt on the day of the full moon. Thus, the 15th day of the month has to be the full moon and not a new moon. In other words, there's a full moon out. I know some people that keep Passover at new moon time. 
and there's no moon there. You guys, this is completely wrong. And the scriptures prove this, right? There's always a full moon at Passover. Every year you will see a full moon. And not only that, at Sukkot time, you will see a full moon at Sukkot time as well. It builds up to a full moon, all right? The moon determines what? The Moedim. What does Moedim mean? It means Shabbats and feast days, but also the new moon time. All right. There are three different days that we're identifying here that the moon determines. It's all connected to the feast days. The moon is always connected to the feast days. If we don't reckon the moon and you're just keeping feast days on Saturdays or Sundays or whenever, you're wrong. You're completely wrong. The moon tells us. And not only that, Yahuwah tells us in his word that in the kingdom, what? We will come to worship when? New moons and Sabbaths. <laughs> so, so get over yourself. The moon determines the Moedim, okay? There's no getting around that. However, in this passage, in Psalms, merely speaking of a singular man named Joseph, Seeing that it plainly says that you appointed this in Joseph, one might conclude that the children of Israel are not in the picture here. But let us notice the full context of the passage. First, I should point out that the previous chapter, chapter 80, uses the name Joseph in a similar fashion in Psalm 81 5. Okay, now my page has got to load. <laughs> How convenient is that? So the moon's determining these things, you guys. Even in ancient times, this is not something that was picked up later. How many more pages we got? Hmm. All right. There we go. Give here, O shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, thou that sittest above the cherubim, shine forth. Psalm 80, verse 1. The name Joseph here refers to the nation of Israel as seen by the statement directly before it. Yahuwah is the shepherd of Israel or Joseph. Thus, Joseph is the name that can refer to an entire nation of Israel collectively. This is why we use the term Ephraim, because uh, this is the banner given to us from Joseph, right? Thou callest in trouble, and I delivered thee. I answered thee in the secret place of thunder. I proved thee at the waters of Meribah. Selah, hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee, O Israel, if thou wouldst hearkest unto me. There shall no strange mighty one be in thee. Neither shall thou worship any uh, foreign mighty one. I am you who and thy almighty, who brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people hearken not to my voice, and Israel would have none of me. So let them go after up the stubbornness of their heart, that they might walk in their own counsels. Oh, that my people would hearken to me that Israel would walk in my ways. And I see this today with those that are stiff-necked. You can show them 40 different facts, and they still cling to the, to the traditions of men and, and have a stiff neck and will not see the truth. I see, I, I see this in the text with Yahuwah's frustration with uh, Israel, right? The very same thing we see happening today. The terms Israel in verse 4, Jacob, verse 4, and, and Joseph, verse 5, his in verse 6, thou art thou and thee in verse 7, and my people in verse 8 are all referring to the same subject, the nation or the people of Israel. Yahuwah's statute and law of the full moon festival, unleavened bread, and tabernacles was ordained when he delivered them on the full moon on the 15th day of the first month, the number is 33, 3. Let me briefly add that even if the passage is speaking dually about the, the nation of Israel and a singular man, Joseph, it does not prove anything for the new moon advocates. The same exegesis of the text stands firm. 
That is, the full moon is the 15th day of any given month on Yahuwah's calendar. Even further evidence is found in consulting the word translated as feast or festival in Psalms 81.3. The word is defined by the S by SEC as follows. H2282, uh, Kahog, a festival or a victim, therefore, solemn feast day or sacrifice solemnly, uh, solemnity. In studying the passages in the scriptures which use the Hebrew word chag, you will find that the reference that in the reference to Yahuwah's appointed times. This is why um, you might hear them say chag samach, uh, you know, um, is part of the greeting for the feast days, right? You will find that in the reference of to Yahuwah's appointed times, it refers to a pilgrimage festival. There, there are a few of these feasts that requires. Um, the Hebrew men to be a part of it. They have to go uh, pilgrim uh, to these places in or J Jerusalem in, in any time other than Dispora. We are in Dispora right now. So the fact that we are not back in the land, this is happening where you are. So don't make any confusion about that. Okay. Some will say, oh, you have to go to Jerusalem. No, we're still in, in Dispora. He hasn't gathered us unto himself. So where you are is where you celebrate this. Okay. In scriptures, there are three pilgrimages, festivals, Exodus 23, 14 through 17. These three pilgrimage festivals or chags are, dist, are identified as the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of Tabernacles. The first day of any given month is never identified as the pilgrimage feast or chag. Thus, Psalm 81.3 is not referring to the first day of the month, but rather the 15th day of the festival month, specifically the first and the seventh months of Yahuwah's calendar. I might also add that in the Companion Bible, footnote on Psalm 81.3, under the heading day, states that some uh, codices in which two early printed editions of Av Avram in the Syrian reads, festivals. Psalm 81, 3 through 6, the passage use, usually used to prove the new moon is the full moon actually disproves the, dis, the belief. The passage is easily understood when examined carefully and in, in its entirety. Friends, if we're going to be right, we must rightly divide the word of truth. Exodus 12, 2, this month shall be unto you the beginning of month. This is a B. It shall be the first month of the year to you. The word month above is Kodesh, and it means new moon, not necessarily month as we understand the word. Again, a synonym. Let's carefully examine what Strong says regarding this word. 2320, Kodesh is uh, from 2318, the new moon by implication, a month or new month. Let's follow the link, 2318, Kadash, a primary root, to be new, causally to rebuild or renew or repair. Again, here's the rub. The root means to rebuild. So if the month begins at the full, does that make any sense? That you would rebuild the month at a full moon. When it's in its full illumination, it doesn't make any sense to what the, the text is telling us. But if you start this process at the conjuncting point, which means there's no moon, then it builds to a crescent, to a full moon. Now it makes sense. Okay. All right. All right. And then then the word should mean decrease, all right? So the root means to rebuild. So if the month begins at the full moon, then the word should mean decrease or tear down because the moon wanes from that point. Does everybody see that? If, if the term to rebuild was to start at full moon, what happens at full moon? You're gonna start decreasing into a waning crescent. So it does not make any sense to rebuild at the full moon because at full moon, you're going, you're not getting any fuller. You're not making a second moon, right? It's going to decrease from that point. 
So it does not make any sense to rebuild at the full moon. So it has to be at the conjunctive where we're rebuilding up to the full moon. Is everybody with me on that, right? We're establishing something here. The word means, that word would mean decrease or to tear down because the moon wanes from that point. It does not wax. However, from the words of scripture, the moon, new moon is indeed rebuilding. There was always a full moon at the night of Passover announcing the 15th day of the month. It is hard to have a full moon at the beginning of the month and another 14.5 days later. The new moon days are a, cat or a third category of day. Evidence is forthcoming. And they are completely distinct from the common work week and Sabbath. The only lunar phase that is distinct from the common work week, which is illuminated, is dark days. The dark days after the fourth Sabbath, either one or two days, comp uh, comprises of the new moon uh, celebration. Otherwise, the new moon is not distinct. It looks like any other day. Remember, the sun tells you when the new day begins, but it is the moon that tells you which day it is. Everybody follow me, okay? The sun tells you when the day begins, but it's the moon that tells you what day it is. In other words, you cannot walk outside on any given day and look at the sun and tell me exactly what day of the month it is. But you can walk outside right now and look at the moon and tell me exactly what day of the month it is. Does everybody follow what I'm telling you? It's impossible to do that with the sun. You can, take when, you can tell when it is day or night, but you cannot tell what day it is. That can only be done by the moon. Okay? They are commonly distinct from the common work week and Sabbath. The only lunar phase that is distinct from the common work week, which is illuminated, is dark days. The dark days after the fourth Sabbath, either one or day, comprises of the new moon celebration. Otherwise, the new moon is not distinct. It looks like any other day. Remember that the sun tells you when the day, new day begins, but it's the moon that tells you which day it is. Some who accept the full moon as new moon believe so because it is their thought that the father would not have Israel leave Egypt on the 15th day of the month during the full moon, pointing out that Israel could not hide. Clearly, the Egyptians would follow Israel out of town as part of the father's plan. It did not matter whether there was a full moon or not. How, how are you going to hide in the... How are you going to hide the foot or hoof prints of 3 million people and probably that many, many animals in the desert sand? A blind man could have followed those tracks. This whole episode was, was to show Israel the power of Yah. You can walk out of Egypt under a full moon after you can walk out of Egypt under a full moon after robbing them blind, and they still would not be able to touch you, even though they pursued you with horse-drawn uh, chariots. The father was not trying to hide Israel. They were bait. Here's another thing. You guys, I spent a lot of time in the desert. I don't know if you've ever done that, especially in Arizona, around the Grand Canyon. But let me tell you something. There's a lot of pitfalls and a lot of things that will hurt you in the desert. Okay, rocks, you know, canyons and things like this. If there's no moon and you're walking around at new moon time when it's pitch black, guess what? You're asking for trouble. You're going to step on something, fall in a hole, you know, step on a snake or something like that because you can't see it. I mean, try it sometime. Go, it's, not, it's not an easy thing. You're, you're feeling around in, in pitch black dark. The moon was illuminating the desert for these millions of people that were following uh, Moses out of Egypt. And Yehovah wasn't, wasn't trying to hide them in the first place. Like the, he says here, they were used as bait. So, so whether the moon was shining or not, they, they still could have followed the tracks. They knew exactly where all these people were going. But make no mistake about it, Yehovah didn't have them out in the desert 
trampling around in the pitch black dark. He illuminated this, the desert with the moon, and it's like daytime. If, if you've ever seen that, especially those of you guys that are in Arizona, I mean, look at the desert and, and the full moon time. You can see for a long ways. It's just like walking around in, in the daytime. It's illuminated, okay? So, yeah, uh, keep that in mind. Page six. And still they were not able to touch, touch you, even though they pursue you with horse-drawn carrots. The father was not trying to hide Israel. They were bait. How could there ever be two days of a new moon celebration if the full moon was new moon? Oh, that's another good point. We see this in, in the text where David and Jonathan, in the story uh, where you know there's a new moon celebration going on, and it's mentioned that it's two days long. Troy is posing the question here, how can that be if there was a full moon as a new moon, right? How would you know that, right? Those days are not distinctive. 1%, 2%. It is not easy to tell the difference between a full moon and one that's just 2% less and one that's 2% prior to that. It's very difficult, okay? How could there ever be two days of a new moon celebration if the full moon was the new moon? There is a two-day new moon celebration in 1 Samuel 20 and Acts 20, 5 through 7. Of course, only one was the first day of the month, but there were two dark days that month, clearly a 30-day month, and the 29th was the last Sabbath, followed by a 30 and one day, both dark days. There is only one full moon, even though it looks full for three or four days sometimes, and even then, which is of those three or four days, are the one or, take, one or two day new moons, like I just said. You cannot tell that unless you've got technology, you can't tell the difference between a 1% full moon or 2% less or 2% after. It's very difficult, okay? So there's like four days there where it's very hard to tell the difference between a full moon and one that's 1% or 2% less or more, um, more so um, than any other day. It's, it's very difficult, right? Both dark days. There's only one full moon, and even though it looks full for three or four days sometimes, and even then, which of those three or four days are the first and second new moon days? Only the dark days solve this dilemma. The model, uh, the model uh, one presents, excuse me, the model one present, present does not need logic or speculation. I just present the evidence, all of it. And he has here, the, the moon is, is pointed out by prophets as a third category of day. Ezekiel 46, 1, Amos 8, 5, Isaiah 66, 23, and 2 Kings 4, 23. So it had to be a third category of day at creation. The weekdays are illuminated. Yahuwah lit the sun in Genesis 1, three through five, so that the new moon days must look different. The sun tells you a new day has begun, and the moon tells you which day it is. The gate to the inner court, Ezekiel 46, one, acts as a switch. It is open during new moon and Sabbath, but shut all six working days. This means that the new moon should never fall on a work day because there are six working days every month in which this gate is shut. This is scripture. So why on the Gregorian calendar does the full moon fall on or any or every day of the week? When it falls on a Wednesday, is the gate open or shut? There is no right answer because you're applying the new moon, a segment of the father's calendar, to a man-made pagan papal calendar that eliminated the use of moon as the beginning of each month. And this happened in 46 BC. The new moon, Chodesh, the rebuilding of the phase of the moon, begins each month in scripture. Numbers 10.10, 10, 1 Samuel 25, 18 and 24, and 2 Kings 4 and 23. So there has to be a new moon day for the very first month of Earth's history at the beginning of Earth's first work week. What did, the moon, uh, what did the new moon look like in the beginning? Genesis 1-1, it is the very first creation event, 
and in its time consuming event, yet Yahuwah does not say, and there was evening and then there was morning or day when he was done. Why? Because of the reasons one and two above. The new moon days are not work week days, never have been. Yahuwah completely separated this segment of time from his work week. It's a set apart day, you guys. It does not count as a part of the week. It's the first day of the month. Okay, we're, we're separating the months in this particular day. I call it a whole day. If the second month of Earth's history began with a new moon, as have every month since, what did the first month of, hist of Earth's history begin with? Answer, a new moon day. And the first one of uh, was dark, and darkness covers the face of the deep, not full and not announced by the first visible crescent. And I have not done a thing. I have not forced you to do anything. I have not forced scripture to say anything. All I did was point out the evidence. No smoke, no mirrors, no Baylor's twine or duct tape, just the evidence as I've at his as it has been given. I've had, I have not had anything to do with what scripture says. The full moon slash new moon model has to add what to what scripture says. The full moon, I believe, is a second, is the second most important point of the lunar cycle, not the first. There have there are many who have adopted the lunar Sabbath and continue in the Babylonian practice of observing the first visible crescent as the new moon. Now, there are some who have adopted the first, excuse me, adopted the full moon as the new moon, even though the verse or logic they use does not support them if examined closely. What burdens me, in, what burdens me the most for these folks is that even though they have adopted a creation calendar or and lunar Sabbaths, the quarter phase moons uh, do not announce all of their Sabbaths. In the Babylonian model, counting the month from the first visible crescent, uh, the quarter phases announce the first day of the week and not the Sabbath. And this is and this is because they do not start their month until the light is lit, the first illumination. Uh, illuminated month moon is seen this would equate to the first day of creation week not the segment of time mentioned in genesis 1 1 which was dark these folks call the second day of the month the first day so what he's talking about here is is reconciling the uh conjunctive days which is there is still a moon there you just don't see it some people account that day as uh, day one with the crescent so some account the the um, the conjunctive day. So even with the reconciling of that particular day, there is a division, and we're going to see this in in everything, you guys. Um, but you is going to once we get the the p's and q's right, he will get us down to the 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 nitty gritty. In other words, he'll get us focused on what is actually the day. All right. Uh, this would equate to the first day of creation week and not the segment of time mentioned in Genesis 1-1, which was dark. These folks call the second day of the month the first day. Thus, the first quarter phase is only five days away and not six. In order for folks to observe this model, to have the quarter phases announce their Sabbath is for the first day of the month to con uh, of for the first day of the, of the month to consist of five working days and a Sabbath rather than, rather than the commanded six work days and a Sabbath. If you are one of these folks and do not believe me, I adjure, uh, adjure you, excuse me, I adjure in the name of the living y'all to go outside and look up. It is because of this error that some believe that the Sabbath of the lunar calendar are on the 7th, 14, 21, and 28th. This is another group of Hebrews that keep, I've seen this as well, where they're one off on what I'm actually keeping, right, which is 8, 15, 22, 29, they will be 7, 14, 21, and 28, exactly one day off, and it's all because of how they reconcile that day. Is everybody following me? The conjunctive day with the first crescent. So again, even on these little P's and Q's, there's, there's still people that are split and keeping it a little differently because of their their interpretation of what the scripture is saying. 
again, I think you, once we get down the major points, I think you was going to focus us in on the actual day, especially when we reconcile um, uh, Shavuot, which is the day he's going to pour out his spirit. All right, so let's continue. Forcing the new moon to be a weekday. The problem with this is at the Passover is that the Passover is on the 14th day of the month and is never the Sabbath. It is always the preparation day for the first day of the of unleavened bread, the 15th of Abib, which is the weekly Sabbath. That's that's every month. You guys, the 15th is always a Sabbath, but on this particular month, it's called a high Sabbath because it's unleavened bread. That's when you got a feast and a Sabbath day that happens on the same day. It's called a high Sabbath. Every Sabbath can be, uh, can be date identified in scripture. Always falls on the 8, 15, 29. Let's say that again. Every time you see in scripture a Sabbath mention, you guys, it's an 8, a 15, a 29, uh, excuse me, a 22nd and a 29. Okay. You will never see another day. You'll never see it the, the 12th day. You'll never see it the, the, the 26th day. Does everybody follow me? Now, how is this possible? And I've identified seven months in our scriptures that identify the 8, 15, 22, and 29. Do you know what, ha what, ha what would take place for you to have a 8, 15, 29, uh, 22, and 29 for seventh months? In the scriptures, that means the rest of the months are also 8, 15, 22, and 29. Does everybody understand what I just said? The Bible alone identifies the, the Sabbath days of the Most High to be 8, 15, 22, 29. So if you're celebrating a Saturday Sabbath, you guys, you may have one month a year where it's the 8th, 15th, and 29th for that month. If you're on a Saturday Sabbath, there's no way you're going to have seven months, more or less 12 months, where it's 8, 15, 22, 29. It's impossible and will never happen. Why? Because Rome has fixed that day to Saturday, and Yahuwah's calendar floats. His is always according to the scriptures. Again, I didn't go outside the Bible for this. The Bible says 8, 15, 22, 29, every month is the Sabbath. This only happens on his calendar, which is a lunar solar calendar. This does not happen on Hillel's calendar or on the Z uh, Zadok calendar, which is also the Hillel calendar. <laughs> it doesn't happen, you guys. It does not happen. So if you're keeping that, I don't know what to tell you. The Bible says 8, 15, 22, 29. The first quarter phase, moon that announces the first Sabbath on the, on the month will be seen directly overhead in the evening before the eighth day of the month. As the sun is setting, the second quarter or full moon will be seen rising in the east as the sun is setting in the evening before the 15th day of the month. That's just happened for this month. It happened in Pisces. What are we at today? Today is what, uh, six, the 17th day of the sixth month, right? We're just two days after the full moon, right? That happened when? On the 15th day, all right? So listen, the moon determines the Moedim. Hear me. So the moon is telling you when the Sabbath is. It's not... Pope Gregory, it's not Julian, it's not the Zadok, it's the moon, as per what the Bible says. All you need to do is look at the moon, it will tell you when the Sabbat is. And furthermore, the secret to that is getting the new moon correct. When you spot that new moon, it will tell you exactly what day on the Gregorian calendar, let's say it, it, the new moon is sighted on a Wednesday, that first crescent, we see that it's, it's the end of new moon day. The following Wednesdays of that month will be the Shabbat. If it happened on a Saturday, the following Saturdays of the month will be the Shabbat. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? If you get the new moon crescent right or, or conjunction and then the crescent, the end of the new moon day, that identifies the day of the Gregorian calendar that the moon, uh, the, the Shabbat will be. 
It's going to be different every every uh, month on the on the Gregarian. It's not fixed. If you're on a fixed day on the Gregarian, it's a pagan calendar. Again, the moon determines the Moedim. All you need to do is see the moon. Okay, you don't need to know what what day of the month it is. If you're in a coma and you suddenly wake up and you can go outside, you can identify when the Shabbat is. You can identify what day of the month it is, period. Why? Because you created his clock to be that way, okay? Let's continue. All right, the second quarter moon, full moon, will be seen rising in the east, and the sun is setting in the evening on the 15th day of the month. The third quarter moon will be seen directly overhead at dawn on the morning of the 22nd of the month. The last waning sliver may or may not be seen close to the eastern horizon at dawn on the morning of the 29th, announcing the last Sabbath of the month. Did you just see that? Those four, those days are distinguished by a phase of the moon. And you could know the Sabbath. If, let's say you missed the first two and you suddenly come to your senses and you go outside, you can identify exactly what day it is and know exactly when the Shabbat is any day of the month, any day of the month, just by observing that. And it's because of where and how you see the moon, okay? If it is seen, this, is general, this generally means a two-day new moon celebration is coming. If not, this generally means that a one-day new moon is about to follow. And that is if you see that crescent on the 27th, uh, the 26th day, excuse me, sometimes I misspeak, on the 29th day of the moon, of the month, okay, depending on where you see and how you see that, um, that moon, you can, after a while and doing this over and over again, you can determine whether it's going to be a two-day new moon or a one-day moon, uh, new moon. Uh, it becomes like a, a, um, a second gnaw or a habit. You know, you just kind of know when this is going to be. Otherwise, if you're new to this, you're going to, you're going to have to take some time to learn these cycles because it's like an ebb and flow. It's like, um, it's not a, a circular thing. The moon's orbit is more of an elliptical. So this is why we can get one or two days. And it takes some practice. It takes some observation to get the rhythm of the moon. And by the way, all of creation is in this rhythm. The, the waters of the, of the earth, the, the animals, the plants, everything is in a rhythm with the moon. We are the only ones out of sync with the moon, by the way. You would reveal that to me. And, and once we get back into sync, that's when we're going to see a lot of revelation, you guys. Uh, I really believe that. This is really important to get his Sabbath days right. It, it, so important that the enemy has gone into overtime in hiding this and obscuring it from you, you guys. Just as, just as he did with the name. Okay, if, if, if he knew that two or more gathered in his name, he's going to be there, and, right? You know the enemy is going to obscure that. The same thing with the Shabbats. If he pours out his blessing on these feast days, the windows of heaven are open up, he pours out his blessing. Guess what the enemy's wanting to do? He's wanting to make sure you miss your appointment. If you make an appointment to go see a heart surgeon on, on Monday the 16th and you show up on Tuesday the 17th, don't you know that that, that appointment is blown that doctor is probably not going to see you. He's got no time for you because you missed your appointment. This is why it's important. And this is why many people might see chaos at Passover if you miss the day. I've never seen chaos at Passover. It's a, it's a, it's a wonderful day to celebrate you as festival. But I've seen here recently where someone said, Every Passover, it's chaos, and you da, 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 da. There's that's a red flag to me. There's something wrong with with what's going on, and because this is the time where he was pouring out his blessing upon those that are being obedient to his Shabbat. When he sees his children get into sync with his Shabbats and with his festivals, it gives the Father joy. Right? He's going to pour out his blessing. If we're missing that day. If we got a stiff neck and we're keeping it fixed, it's every Saturday or if it's every Sunday, he's not going to meet you, you guys. 
just like that heart surgeon is not going to meet you on Tuesday the 16th because you missed your appointment the day before. You knew better. You knew when your appointment was, right? Does everybody understand? All right. Let me get back to where I was. In the full moon model, excuse me, in the full moon, new moon model, the first two Sabbaths are indeed announced by quarter phases of the moon. But there, but here, this model self-destructs. The one or two day, excuse me, the one or two dark days in this model cannot be ignored. They must be counted as weekdays. In this model, if there's one dark day and there's, excuse me, and there's one dark day and after the second Sabbath, then third and the fourth Sabbaths are, in, are of the month, will be a day before the quarter phase that is supposed to be announced to them. Psalm 104, 19 says that the moon regulates the appointed times. The Sabbath is the first appointed time, Leviticus 23, 1 through 3. The underlying Hebrew uh, word for seasons and feast in these verses is the same, moadim. Okay, that word means the very same thing. It means feast, Sabbaths, and new moons. These are all appointed times, okay? Genesis 1 through 14 uh, excuse me, One fourteen says that the lights in the heavens will regulate the signs, seasons, days, and years. Seasons here is also the Hebrew word moedim. What good is a signal for the Sabbath if it arrives a day late? It gets worse. If there are two dark days after the second Sabbath in this model, then the quarter phases will appear two days after the last Sabbath. Does everybody understand that? If we don't reconcile these the new moon days, because you can have a one day or a two day, it's going to throw you off, right? It will appear two days after the, the last two Sabbaths. Now, what will happen over a period of time of months, you get uh, accumulation. You'll, you'll have 10 days, sometimes nine, sometimes 11, depending on the year extra days because you didn't count that that uh, second new moon day. Does everybody understand? This is important because this is mentioned in the Jubilees where if, if the new moon is, if the moon's not reckoned correctly, you're going to have 10 extra days every year. This is why right here is because you blow through the month, you blow through the new moon phase of it, and you go right into the work week, and now you've accumulated one, maybe two days each month all the way through the year. Now you've got about 10 extra days, sometimes 11 extra days for the whole year. I know this because when I come out of the Hallel's calendar and I'm trying to reconcile the days, I ended up with 10 extra days every year, and I could not figure out what was going on. It's because I wasn't reconciling the, the new moon days. I was blowing right through them. That's very typical, you guys. And so that's what I believe that the uh, author of that passage is trying to tell us, okay? So we need to understand this. Now, some that are proponents of the new moon or, or observing the moon at all will say that if you observe the moon, you're going to end up with 10 extra days. That is not what Jubilees is telling you. It's not what it's telling you at all. And their ignorance is, is you know, fueling this, uh, this passion that they have about it. It's because you don't understand what, what the author is talking about. You're not understanding the new moon days, okay? So I hope I've covered that enough that you understand that we have to reconcile these new moon days. And it is a feast day. It's a celebration. It's not a, it's not a, uh, non, it's a non-commerce day, which means we can't spend money, but you can work. So it's not like a Shabbat. It's a worship day. We're supposed to have a feast every month. We're supposed to blow the shofar every month. Now, I was very pleased to see Adam over at Parable of the Vineyard finally, after a while, started recognizing new moon days. Now, he hasn't got to the lunar Sabbath yet, but he has acknowledged the new moon days. This is a biblical concept. And it tells you very plainly in Ezekiel, excuse me, in Isaiah, that we're going to do this in the kingdom. This is something that we will observe in the kingdom. So whether you're doing the, you're keeping a Saturday now, guess what you're doing in the kingdom? He's going to get you right. He's going to reconcile what you're doing. Okay. New moon days do matter. 
all right? It regulates the signs, the seasons, the days, and the years. Seasons here also, the word Moedim is the word Moedim. What good is the signal for the Sabbath if it arrives a day late? It gets worse. There are two dark days after the second Sabbath in this model. Then the quarter phases will appear two days after the Sabbath. Not much of an announcement is. And again, I just, I just told you, this is how the days accumulate if we do not uh, observe these days correctly. If we believe the Sabbath, the Sabbath is regulated by the moon, which scripture clearly proves is the case, then all Sabbaths of the month should be consistently announced by similar phases of the moon. Each of these three phases should be should have a distinct look. Here's here is what this model will look like if you go outside and observe with your own eyes. So let's take a look at that. So what he's showing here that is if you observe the new moon as full moon, this is what it will look like, right? Covered in light, right? Because Seth, which means covered or hidden, we've got a full moon. Notice how the moon looks very similar just, just days after that, leading up to the next quarter. All right. Again, this is the full moon is new moon model. This is not correct. This is, this is what some Hebrews are doing. When the quarter phases announces the third and fourth Sabbath in this model, excuse me, where are the quarter phases to announce the third and fourth Sabbath in this model? Question mark. This is what happens when using the full moon as new moon is there is only one dark day after the second Sabbath. Remember, there are approximately seven days between the quarter phase of the moon. This should not, this should be a big hint from the last sliver to the first quarter. There are eight days. If there is only one dark day after the Sabbath or nine days, if there are two dark days, Notice that the first quarter moon is not seen until the day after the third Sabbath of the full moon. The new moon model is over, and there is no quarter moon phase to announce the last Sabbath because the moon is wasted as the new moon. The full moon is wasted as a new moon again. So this is going to throw everything off on your count if you are keeping a full moon is the new moon, okay? And this, will, this is what it will look like if you're doing that. Because the full moon was wasted as the new moon, how can we say that the Sabbath is regulated by the moon with this model? Two of the Sabbaths are not announced by quarter phase, which are approximately seven days apart. It gets worse if there are two dark days after the second Sabbath. Please note on the next page that the full moon at the start is used as new moon, a third category today, but the end of the month, the full moon has to be counted as one of the seven days between phases, right? Is what he's talking about. It's very, it's very difficult to determine a full moon from a, a moon that's, you know, 2% less or 2% um, or 1% less. The full moon is part of the seven days between phases, but is forced to be counted as the third category of day, new moon, at the end of the month. There are seven days after the last dark day before the first quarter moon, and we have been told that there is no light in heaven on the seventh day sat, uh, cycle, which is a lie. Based upon the quarter phase of the moon, for example, Sabbath and new moon, Rosh Chodesh, both periodically recurring in the course of the year, the moon, the new moon is still, and the Sabbath originally depended on the lunar cycle. And this is from the Jewish Encyclopedia, uh, Encyclopedia page 410. The Hebrew month is a lunar month, and the quarter of this, of this period, one phase of the moon, appears to have determined the week of seven days. Encyclopedia uh, Biblica, page 4,708, 80, excuse me. It seems to be double standard to say that the appointed times of Yahuwah are regulated by the moon and then not permitted, excuse me, and not permit the lunar phase to speak. The quarter phase of the seven, the quarter phase of, the quarter phase are seven days apart for a reason and distinctively different from one another. 
from the other illuminated phase. I'm getting tired, you guys. And it seems to be a shame to ignore this natural evidence. Israel certainly did not. Historians have discovered and admitted that the week was among all early nations, the lunar months were readiest large and were, excuse me, the lunar months were the readiest large divisions of time and was divided into four weeks corresponding to the phases of the quarters of the moon. In order to connect the reckoning by weeks with the lunar month, we find that all ancient na nations observed some peculiar uh, solemnities to mark the day of the new moon. This can be found in the popular and critical Bible Encyclopedia, 1904 edition, volume three, page 1497. Each lunar month is divided into four parts, corresponding to the four phases of the moon. The first week of each month began with the new moon. Okay, so Kaseth, to me personally, would mean hidden or covered, which would mean you wouldn't see it. So this is why I've said and why the um, writer earlier said it doesn't make any sense that this word, which is used only twice in the scriptures, has been translated to mean covered in light. In other words, full. Does that make any sense? It doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, so this kind of can be uh, confusing here. Make no mistake about it, you guys. The new moon starts when you're building the moon. So it has to start at nothing. Okay, so we don't see it. It's, it's hidden, okay? So this is day one. Again, if day one happens on a Friday, then the eighth day, 15th day, 22nd, and a 29th is going to be on what? It's going to be on a Friday. If this day happens to be on a Tuesday, you guys, and this is how you can reconcile the Gregorian with you, his calendar. If new moon or the first day is on a Tuesday, then every Shabbat after that is going to be to Tuesday, which will be the 8th, 15th, 29th, 22nd, and 29th every month. If it happens on a Wednesday, 8th, 15th, 22, 29 is going to fall on a Wednesday of that month. Does everybody follow me? This is a really easy way. If you're getting confused with the Gregorian and who is calendar, began at new moon time. When you, when you reconcile that, that day will now become the Shabbat of that month next, next four weeks. Does everybody follow me? Okay. So the first week of each month began with new moon. So that as the lunar month was one or two days more than four periods of seven days, these additional days were not reckoned at all. Right. That needs to be understood. These days, additional days, were not reckoned at all, which is why it says in Jubilees you'll end up with 10 extra days because they're, they're not reckoned at all. They're just blown through. And that's how when you get to the end of the year, you got extra days. So it's imperative that we pause at this particular point. And by the way, in the seventh month at Rosh, uh, Rosh Hashanah, what did the two Jews go do? They go look for the crescent, right? To what? Declare Rosh Hashanah and the head of the month. Did you know this happens every month and not just the seventh month? We're supposed to do that every month. But Judah only does it on the seventh month, which they call the head of the year. Again, that's not the head of the year. Abib is the head of the year, which is Nisan 1. It's supposed to happen every month. The Bible tells us that. We're supposed to declare the month every month at new moon time and it's a feast it's a worship day and it's a non-commerce day notice what the moon does from there it builds it grows into its fullness it's easier to reconcile the month this way than starting with a full moon which you can't tell the day before and the day after and the two days before or two days after if you really want to get down to it it's really hard to reconcile that so this is what Yahuwah's calendar looks like right here. From one new moon to the next new moon. New moon and full moon are two different things. I find it really interesting that, you know, everywhere I look in, in different cultures calendar, one time I went to the beach in Hawaii and posted on a tree is the moon cycle. And it was, it was posted there for fishermen. 
because there are particular days of the moon cycle where it's it's better to go fishing. Okay, new moon time and full moon time are the two better times to go fishing. Fish are more active then. And so the fishermen like to know what the moon cycle is, okay? The, the, the moon regulates this. Just, just like I said, all of nature is in sync with the moon, the tides. Everything is in sync with the moon. So are the, the fish of the sea. And so they're more active on certain days of the month, and it has to do with the moon. I've tested this, you guys. I fish every day of the month for years when I was a fisherman, I can tell you that there are times of the, of the month where fish bite and where fish do not bite, okay? That is a universal law. So that is um, what the calendar looks like. So we've gone a little bit long. I've talked, we've watched two videos. You guys, we've got any questions. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop uh, the, the lecture here because <laughs> we're getting, we're getting kind of late. I'm getting tired. Any questions? All right. So I didn't see. I didn't see what the question was in chat. Let's ask God uh, now. Corey says, world last chance uh, doesn't account for two new moon days. That's why they're counting. Uh, they're counting today as the 17th when it's the 16th. Uh, just realized this month. That could be, that could be, depends on how they're reckoning. If they're counting um, the conjunctive day as day one, it can be off a day. And that's what I was, uh, you know, trying to explain that there, even with, you know, the little details of new moon day, you're going to have division, right? So we've got, we've got different Hebrew uh, observances where they're off like that. And I think you was going to, you know, the P's and Q's, once we get the P's and Q's correct, he will reconcile us down from that. Um, you know, so I see what you're saying. And it, it's even further uh, discrepancies than that. Um, there's some that, yeah, they, they're two weeks off. There's some that are one day off, you know, like uh, the, those that keep the, the full moon. They're exactly two, two weeks off. Um, they're still on this, you know, the same calendar observance, so to speak, and, and, and keeping a lunar solar, but they're still two weeks off. And then there are those that are doing that as well. They're, they're not, they're not keeping that um, second day. They're just keeping a one. As a matter of fact, I think Zen Garcia, if I'm not mistaken, is on a lunar solar calendar, but he does just that. He, 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 he doesn't reconcile a two day or a one day. It's, it's pretty much set. And this is why he has a calendar that he can produce because he's not reconciling those days. And undoubtedly on his calendar, you know, there's, there's probably very evident if you're keeping that, that it's off sometimes month to month, it could be off one day or two days. That's why is because sometimes it's a two day new moon. If we blow through every month and just keep a one day new moon, what's going to happen to that extra day? It's going to accumulate at the end of the year, right? The same reason why it says this in Jubilees that if we don't reconcile this correctly, you're going to end up with 10 extra days. We can't just blow through those time periods and not reconcile that day does count, but where it counts matters. Okay. I hope that answers your question. Any more questions? Let me scroll through. Uh, no more questions, you guys? Okay. So what yeah. day is it today? Michelle's asking. Today is the, uh, I believe it's the 17th day of the sixth month. Yeah, so full moon wasn't, was it? Full moon wasn't last night. It was the night before. So that would make this to the sixth, the 17th day, right? I'm going yeah. back to my whiteboard now because this month is when we had the, the two new moon day because the moon wasn't visible on the 29th 
or really the 30th, because that's the one where it was the percentages. It's like 2%, 4%. Yeah. It was invisible. So you, there's no 31 days. So automatically no. that after the 30th, that's going to be the next day or the, the first day of the new yeah. month. So and that's that right. was on, occurred on the 28th of August. So if I count the new moon day, the first day is the 28th. So seven days from there, that's the 8th on the 4th of, of September. And then the 15th yep. occurred on the 11th. 11th. That's right. That's right. And so today, which the, the is 15th, this... today's the 16th. 16th day. That's right. Exactly. And that's yeah. why I was like, I didn't get it for the first couple of years. I started following you. I'm like, why is it? I know I we're given a suggestion to use WLC and I'm like why is it <laughs> off because some days when yeah. WLC says it's the Sabbath and then when you would broadcast I'm like nope <laughs> you already you missed it and so I'm like ah, yeah. now I get it because it yeah. doesn't they don't recognize that second day you're right and I think I think um Zen Garcia is doing the same thing and there may be some others that are doing that too so that's why you'll see a one day difference between a couple of groups, but the other group that's keeping full moon is going to be two weeks off. Um, and then it gets, it gets even more, um, you know, confused after that. Um, you know, there's, for instance, there are those that are keeping this month as Tishri, right? Uh, Judah is doing that. So you'll see uh, Glazerson and um, uh, Alana Nava, that are keeping this month as Tishri, and this is because they didn't reconcile. Um, they're not. They're not worried about the agricultural months, and this is this is why we keep the equinoxes and the um, solstice and track the time with that, because there are seasons that we also have to track, not just the days and 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 uh, months, but also the seasons, which will put us in line with the new year. If you don't get the new year right, if you don't get the, the month a B right, you're going to be off about a month or so. And some even two months. I, I've even seen another group that are that is doing everything at least two months off. And this has been consistent through the years, which kind of blows my mind. I don't know how they're doing that. But with all the groups where there are about five or six groups that are trying to keep Yahuwah's calendar that are all over the place. Okay. I believe you who is going to get us focused in on the right days. And I'm praying that's going to be very soon, but you're right. It, it can be kind of confusing where, you know, you're looking at one group that this is a problem. And if you're following too many people to teach in the calendar, you're going to, you're going to be all over the place. You're going to be over here one day and over here next day and all over the place. So you got to pick a place, right? Do this with the moon. Don't, don't do it with the teacher. We've established what the new moon is. It's when you can't see it, right? And then we start building from there with the first day, which, which is the crescent. Start counting like that. And you'll get, as you walk it out, you'll get more accurate. You'll get to the point where it's like riding a bicycle, you guys. I kid you not, where you could not know what day it is and walk outside and look at the moon and know exactly when it is just because you've done it so much, Okay. And so you don't have to go to these different teachers and, and get kind of confused thinking, oh, man, I thought it was the 15th day and, and they're saying it's the 14th day. Well, that's that's the way they're reckoning the day. It doesn't mean they're right, you know, and I can understand the confusion, uh, but it's the time we're living in where we're, we're just figuring this out and not everybody's on the same page yet. So um, it is kind of tricky on, on who you're following and who you're learning from. One thing is for sure. It is not a fixed day. I don't care if you're counting, you know, day one, day two, day three, and you're not saying Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, which is splitting hairs to me. If your Sabbath happens on a Saturday, you're counting day one, day two, day three matters not. You're on a pagan calendar. It's not a fixed day. It goes by the moon. The Bible is very clear. You who have created the moon for this purpose. And this continues into the, the kingdom, you guys. So how does that reconcile? If you're keeping a Saturday Shabbat 
and you go into the kingdom where you're now observing the new moon. What, what does that do with your Saturday Shabbat? It blows it out of the water because it's not a fixed day. It's a day that moves on the Gregorian calendar because it's determined by the moon, period. So um, once we learn this cycle, once we get this down, like I said, it's like riding a bicycle. A lot of times I don't even know what day of the Gregorian calendar is, but I can walk outside and I know what day of the month that we're on um, for you who is calendar. And this is after years of walking it out. Really, it's like I said, riding a bicycle, it's like a second nature. So when once you, you know, go outside and you see that, it's like, oh, okay, I know what day it is. Right. You can tell whether tomorrow is the Shabbat or today was the Shabbat and, and tomorrow is the first day of the work week or whatever based on what the moon is telling you, okay? Any more questions? No more questions. Let me just say, I apologize, you guys. I know um, we started an hour late tonight and that was my fault. My computer was doing some crazy things I didn't expect. And so we got an hour's late start. So it's currently 1038 here on the, on the west, on East Coast. And I am cached. I'm tired. And, uh, you know, I know that someone wanted to search some codes after this, but we're going to do that in the next class, you guys. I just don't have it in me. So um, I hope I didn't confuse you too much with time uh, and, and the discrepancy there. I apologize for that. It will always be 7 o'clock on the Eastern, okay? So next week, I will make sure my computer is not doing that, and, and we'll start at the appropriate time. Hopefully, we'll have more people in the class then, too. So we'll pick up next week on reconciling the moon. I want to go through all the scriptures that that reference uh, Rosh Chodesh and the two scriptures that that uh, uh, apparently declare a full moon, the word Kaseth, and we'll go from there. Uh, probably continue with some of uh, Troy's articles he's gotten written again. I, I like using these other people who have already put the, the curriculum down, you guys, because that's what they're specializing in. You know, I, I work do and do codes. If, if you were, you know, go, need to go see a heart surgeon, you're going to see a specialist for that, right? You wouldn't go see a guy that works on the ear, nose, and throat when you've got a heart problems, right? You go see a specialist. So Troy has made it his life's mission to explain this calendar because he comes out of a place um, of, of the Seventh-day Adventists. And, and by the way, that particular group is producing the most Sabbath day keepers of any other group, which is the, the uh, Seventh-day Adventist. Um, he comes out of that. Walter is also former Seventh-day Adventist. They understand the Shabbat, but when they saw that it was a fixed day, Saturday, in the way they were keeping him, and the Bible tells us that there's new moon days and it's reckoned by the moon. Guess what? Eventually, you're going to have a lot of people in that group going, uh, something's not right here. And what did they do? They came out of it and started keeping the biblical days. And so I got to take my hat off to that brother. He has spent a lot of time putting this stuff together and, and searching this out. Not, not only him, but many others. And so that's why I use his, his, um, his stuff. He's done all the footwork. Doesn't mean I haven't gone and searched the scriptures myself because I have, but he's made the outline for us to make it a little easier. So if you want to kind of, um, let me just show you this. You need to know the difference between his website and a, an imposter, which is kind of comical that the person named their website that it was almost similar. I've seen people that try to go to, uh, his site, which is creationcalendar.com. Okay, this is what it looks like. And you can scroll it down and find all of the information that he's written on uh, down here at the bottom. Really good articles. Again, it's called Creation Calendar. Then there's an imposter called Creator's Calendar, which is it's very similar and it's exactly two weeks difference. It observes the full moon as a new moon, and it's very confusing. So don't be misled and go to the wrong one and start seeing all this other stuff, which is, you know, that the devils are in the details, right? And that's what he wants to do is confuse. 
Troy's site is called creationcalendar.com. And this is what it looks like. It's solid information, you guys. And um, this is what I use to teach from because he's already done the footwork. He's already put it together and it's very well put together in PDF form. You can download these and um, study them. This is a uh, former Seventh-day Adventist site. So like I said, there's a lot of people that come out of Seventh-day Adventist and found the truth, just like there's been a lot of people come out of the Southern Baptist or like me come out of the Pentecostal movement and found the truth. And so I appreciate uh, Troy. I appreciate Seventh Trumpets Prepper and all the others, uh, Brother Daryl Whitfield on, uh, on Facebook, who have all come to this truth and are teaching this truth now. Um, I think this is a critical point, you guys. I, I believe that with everything that is in me, that who was revealed to me, the, the common thing that happened in the upper room, why you who have poured out his spirit on that day is they were in one mind in one accord. They weren't on five different calendars. They all knew exactly what day it was. Okay. It was Shavuot. It's not called Pentecost. We're going to cover that later too. That word is a misleading word. We're not supposed to be, be counting 50 days. It does not even line up with the agricultural um, facts that you cannot grow wheat in 50 days. And the fact that nobody's picked this up in 2000 year boggles my mind because I'm not a, I'm not a grain farmer. I just you know, saw the inconsistencies in the pattern and then took the time to go look at how long it grew wheat, how long it takes to grow wheat and found that it's impossible. Now, this, this caused me to try to reconcile. I like mysteries and enigmas. And so I had to figure this thing out. And it was right there the whole time. It says in the plain text there, seven Sabbaths complete and then 50 days, which is 102 days, right? These little truths have been hidden from us for a reason. Yahuwah hid it. He allowed it to happen. We see this is written in Ezekiel. And uh, this is because that uh, Israel defiled his, his feast days and his Shabbats, and they were doing terrible things. So what did Yahuwah do? He scattered them. He took the Shabbat from them. He took the feast day from them, and he hid it. He kind of hid it. And so when the Christians come along, it was still hidden. And this is how we get these words like Pentecost, right? because it wasn't supposed to be revealed until this time, until this season, and until this people, you, you guys, the Hebrews that are coming out of her, my people, just like John wrote in Revelation, you're coming out of that man-made traditions and traditions of religion, and you're coming to the truth, and he's given it to you. This is a very special thing, and I, that's why I said this is probably the most powerful time, this side of the, the resurrection to exist. We're going to see his, his arrival He's giving us his Shabbat, his name, and his festivals. This is a time of, of growing and, and understanding this knowledge. Uh, I, I find it a, a very special time. So I hope you're blessed by these teachings and this understanding. And I know that you will find blessing in walking this out because he's done that in my life, you guys. It's, it's one thing to keep the Shabbat on a Saturday and being like, yeah, I'm keeping the Shabbat. Listen, that's noteworthy, and that is that's noble to do that, right? To take a step. But when we figure out the truth, and we're like, I really want to do that. You know, I, I want to be the spot on. I don't want to be some time in it. I want to be all the time in it, right? Every time, correctly. That's his calendar. It's determined by his clock, which is the sun and the moon, Make no mistake about it. It's not just the moon. It's the sun and the moon. Incidentally, these are just, these are the two calendars they found in Qumran. It wasn't one. It was two. One track the sun, one track the moon. Why? Because you need both to reconcile the year and the month. This is why the solstice and the equinox is important. We have to track the, the sun as well, which is you know coming upon us pretty soon. We're going to be doing that again, which is reconciling a bee. Okay. So this will be a, a critical point in um, this, this series of teaching the calendar is walking this out from day one, which is a B, N Nissan one, which will be coming up at Passover time. So we'll, we'll continue this walk together, counting out the days. By the way, there's no counting omers. 
when we get to that point, we'll be counting weeks, okay? But it's important to get that year right and that Nissan won correctly. Otherwise, you're going to be off. This is why we got, you know, Judah that's one month ahead of us this year. They're not reconciling the, the, the equinox correctly. Just so happens that um, this year we're in, in line with most of the, the Sabbath keepers. Uh, Parable of the Vineyard, I believe, is on the, is on the same time frame as us. And even McCall, they're just two, two weeks different than us. Okay, so um, again, like, there's like five different ways that Hebrews are doing it. You who is going to get us all on the same page. I'm a fervent believer in that. He's not going to leave us in confusion. He's not going to keep us that way. He sees that we're his children trying to learn this thing, and he's patient with us. So we need to be patient with one another, too. Don't be beating each other over the head on how they're keeping the Sabbath. Um, you know, try to try to give it to them with love, but don't don't beat it into them they won't receive it that way so just pre present the evidence as it is and let the holy spirit take take over and and let them you know chew on it and digest it i'm trying not to overwhelm you guys with too much at one time i do know that that can be a bad thing if i just like give you both barrels at one time it's it's usually overwhelming so we're going to take it kind of slowly uh, week to week we're going to do this every every monday at 7 p.m. Eastern time, little bits at a time until we get it. So everybody understand? Everybody with me? Yep. Very, very good. All right. Let me pray for you guys, and then we will see you in the next um, meeting, which is Monday. Again, we'll, we'll, we'll search some codes then. I know uh, our sister wanted to do some codes, on, but I'm just, I'm tired. <laughs> it's already working on 11 o'clock here, so... Let me pray for you. Abba Yehud, we're just so thankful, Father, for this opportunity to study your calendar and to understand your word a little more deeper, Father. And so I pray that you would, you would anoint this time that we're together, that you would bring your revelation, that you would reveal these days to us and help us to understand it more clearly, Father. Father, I pray that you would go with each one of these students, that you would um, be with them as they meditate on this information until we meet again, Father, that you would keep them safe, that you would bless them, that you would send your angels to encamp around them and keep themselves safe. Bring them back at the appointed time. I pray this in Yeshua's name. Amen. All right, you guys, I love you. We'll see you next Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. I promise to have everything worked out uh, with my computer by then. We'll see you then. All right, shalom to you. We'll see you. Love you all. Leila Tov. Good night. Leila Tov. <laughs>